Hey guys, and welcome back to Blockchains Unchained, your go-to insight for the latest on all of the blockchain projects, brought to you by Icon Plus Capital, the venture capital firm. Joining me today is Logan Sita, the founder of Zeitgeist, the first decentralized market hub and ecosystem on the Kasama and Polkadot networks, built by Web3's most innovative thinkers. Logan, great to chat to you today. Welcome. How are you doing? Hey, I'm good. Thank you. Yeah, it's great to have you. Um, you're a really new project. Really excited to learn more about it. There are a few competitors, competitors out there, but we'll get into all of that. But before we do, tell me, who is Logan? What's your background? Sure. So, yeah, so I'm founder and CEO of Zeitgeist. Um, so before um, starting Zeitgeist, my background is as an engineer. So I've been in the blockchain space since early 2017. Mm -hmm. I started building uh, like decentralized applications, dApps based on Ethereum. Uh, for the past two years, I worked at Web3 Foundation um, in the technical department. So helping with, um, at first, building documentation, building out the Polkadot Wiki, um, but then moving to uh, tooling, especially around launch, the launch of Kusama, and then afterward Polkadot. Um, and... Yeah, during that time, I uh, started to work on Zeitgeist kind of in, at nights and weekends and then mm -hmm. left earlier this year to work on Zeitgeist full time. Okay, so you were obviously working on it during those nights and those weekends, but overall, where did the idea come from? And obviously, describe it for us. Sure. Um, so Zeitgeist is an evolving blockchain for prediction markets in Futurkey. Um, so the core of what we're building um, revolves around permissionlessly creating, trading, and resolving prediction markets. Uh, and in case anyone that's listening to this doesn't know what a prediction market is, it's essentially just an open market where um, assets representing future outcomes are traded. So you can imagine uh, someone can create a market on the, what the weather in Berlin will be tomorrow. And then um, participants, traders can come and trade what they think the weather will be tomorrow. Um, so Zeitgeist, the core of the protocol re revolves around doing this in a decentralized way. Mm -hmm. um, but with this, uh, we're, we're building um, on -chain, an on-chain governance mechanism uh, using prediction markets, uh, which is uh, Futarchy. That's what's called Futarchy. And so, um, yeah, so the reason... Uh, I'm working on Zeitgeist is because uh, so ever since getting into the blockchain space, like I've been really interested uh, by the idea of prediction markets mm -hmm. and kind of the potential prediction markets have in a ton of different industries. Um, and one of the first projects I was like a, a huge fan of and has have followed along like for the past four years uh, was Augur. Uh, which was a yeah. decentralized prediction market, or it's still around a decentralized prediction market built on Ethereum. And so I kind of followed along on that progress. Um, never really saw like the um, potential like playthrough of what right. prediction a prediction market platform could be. Um, so after kind of working like with Kusama and Polkadot um, and kind of using Substrate to build uh, different kind of projects over time. Um, it, 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 it appeared to me that uh, Substrate and the Polkadot ecosystem uh, with its scalability and its ability to, to make a protocol that's customized to the application use case uh, was one of the answers for um, creating a usable decentralized prediction market. Um, so that's that's um yeah that's basically why I decided to uh, start building uh, yeah prediction I, I'm with you I'm with you so you so you mentioned um, you know a, a specific prediction market there um, but you know there's also poly marketers so how are you guys different yeah so so yeah there's there's a few different ways to like classify the prediction market competitors or like the prediction market uh, players. Um, so we have like 
both the centralized and decentralized prediction markets. Um, for us, we're looking at like the centralized prediction markets uh, who have most of the users and have already built up um, traction as our, our main competitors. So we're trying to build an application that rivals um, the centralized um, applications and usability uh, and uh, the ability to attract liquidity and traders. Um, so besides that, we also have the decentralized um, prediction markets like Augur and Polymarket and um, Gnosis and others. And what I think is our biggest differentiator, like our biggest competitive advantage uh, compared to these um, kind of in, in the broad scope, there's a lot of small things, but like the big one I think is um, our governance system and the ability uh, we have with our token holders, um, we, the ability we give them uh, to help um, decide how Zeitgeist changes and evolves over time. Um, so both using Futarchy and just simply having a governance system on a prediction market, I think is one thing that we're doing that other um, prediction market on blockchain. On mm. And you did touch on this. I do want to just focus more um, on Futaki for the minute. Why is that actually better um, than, than relying solely on network validators? Yeah, so to understand why Futaki is better than kind of other on-chain governance systems, uh, we have to talk about like one of the properties of prediction markets. Right. So one of the properties of prediction markets is that they're really good at aggregating information. Mm -hmm. and giving us a signal for how likely a future event will happen. Um, so <laughs> these are better than kind of competing tools like polling people. Um, and the reason for that is because they give you incentives. Um, so traders have incentives for basically telling uh, their knowledge and information um, to the public. Um, so the people who have knowledge can come and basically arbitrage the markets for profit. Um, and the side effect is that we're getting a better signal on whatever this prediction market, whatever this prediction um, is. Um, so like using this property, we apply it to governance decisions. Um, so like you can imagine like we create a market that asks how likely a bug will be found um, in, in an upgrade that we're proposing to go live. Um, or another one would be, um, how, how, will, how will this upgrade um, impact the daily average tra uh, transactions or the daily average users? So basically, does this upgrade make the protocol uh, more usable? And then uh, by using these markets, <clears throat> we're able to um, get this accurate signal and then use that information to feed back into the decisions we make. Um, so that's, that's basically a few turkey um, and how it works. And in terms of just the overall development, what stage are you guys at? When can people actually start to use the prediction market? Yeah, so, so right now we have, so we're building like, a, we're building like the entire stack um, from the blockchain uh, to the application layer, um, including like an SDK, which is you can think of as like sitting in between those two that other people can use as well. Um, so as far as like our blockchain development, we have the core um, logic um, already operational. Um, so we've had a test net um, almost since the beginning for a few months. So um, since March or April of this year, we've had an operational test net that has kind of the core functionality of prediction markets, trading them and so on. Mm -hmm. Um, so what we're working on now um, on that layer is kind of more research and development um, ideas, such as uh, we have something called Rikido, which is um, a new uh, AMM that we're working on. And we have uh, uh, better dispute resolution um, mechanisms like the court. Um, so that's kind of progressing along. And um, what a lot of our focus is going on at the moment is the application, so the Zeitgeist application. Um, and this, we're aiming to have kind of a closed beta release. Um, so in the next like three to four weeks, we're going to start sending out invites um, to kind of 
our community, um, and then slowly have a staged rollout. Um, and and we'll, we're hoping to have that uh, public before our uh, mainnet deployment, which is later this year. And then obviously there's the um, ZTG token. So where does that come into the entire ecosystem? What are the benefits of holding it and where does its value come from? Yeah, so the so ZTG uh, is used in a bunch of different places in the protocol. So the so it's a native currency of Zeitgeist. So the first thing it's used for is um, transaction fees. So to inter to do anything on Zeitgeist, you have to spend some ZTG. Um, and then it's used as um, bonds and deposits in a bunch of different places. So one of those places is market creation. So when someone creates a market. Uh, they have to bond some ZTG. And the reason they have to bond this is because um, it's basically like a spam prevention mechanism. If someone creates a spam market, uh, we can slash the funds that they put up, put there. And then eventually um, they'll run out of money. So we'll stop getting any spam. Uh, and then we also use it in dispute resolution. So in the court mechanism, um, ZTG, ZTG yep. is how you join the court. And it's also how you create a court case. So how someone disputes uh, what a market resolved to. Um, we also have, uh, so since we're building a parachain, we have um, nodes called collators. Yeah. And so we have a staking mechanism uh, using ZTG to select those collators. Um, and then we have, uh, and then of course, in the markets. So at, like in liquidity, uh, you can use ZTG um, as liquidity. And in terms of um, rewards for correct predictions, where does those funds come from? So prediction markets um, like operate just like how any other market operates in that um, the, on every winning trade, there's also a losing trade on the other end. Um, so any, anytime someone profits from a trade, um, there's someone else who took the opposite end of that trade and was wrong. Um, so that's where kind of the ZTG comes from, is from basically the people who picked the, the side that didn't win in whatever the prediction market is predicting. Um, and, and yeah. That makes sense. That sounds like any kind of normal, uh, any, kind of no any kind of normal setup. That makes sense. Um, so what kind of predictions will Zeitgeist focus on? Um, what kind of industries could you potentially expand to? Sure. So, um, sorry. So, um, we have a, we have a bunch of different applications that we can use with prediction markets. So one big one we're excited about is uh, governance and futarchy. Uh, but there's also um, things we're looking into in the insurance sector. So uh, specifically, what's called reinsurance, uh, or the the kind of ability to make insurance products on kind of the long tail. Um, of events. Uh, there's, of course, um, things like sports and esports, uh, which can use prediction markets um, for entertainment reasons. Uh, there's uh, politics, which I think is an interesting uh, way to get people more involved in kind of local um, politics. Mm, absolutely. Uh, by, yeah, by creating prediction markets on that. Um, and then, yeah, then a whole a whole list of Kind of smaller events that we can also apply prediction markets to yeah i think these things are always very interesting because they don't have to be just solely based on this industry there is um so much room for expansion you know you mentioned politics really really interesting um but being the first prediction market on substrate of course so what integrations and strategic roles do you plan to occupy within polkadot and the kusama ecosystem yeah so so some of the integrations we're looking at, um, it's still it's still very early for us. Um, we're we haven't deployed yet, so we haven't um, so we have we haven't really uh, progressed too far on what the integrations will be. Um, but there, we definitely have been thinking about a lot of them. So 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 on one hand, we have the ability um, in the polka dot and on on Kusama. Uh, to have cross-chain transactions. Um, so this means we can do 
uh, we'll probably start out with things like like simple asset transfers. So using ZTG um, and on other parachains for different things, um, but also using uh, the prediction market assets as well. So you can imagine like someone creates a prediction market. Um, let's say it's like an insurance prediction market on whether or not a polka dot validator will get slashed. And then you can use one of those outcomes. So let's say mm -hmm. uh, the outcome that it will get slashed, uh, which is kind of an insurance product. Um, and then use that on another chain uh, to do something like take out a DeFi loan. Um, right. So that's one, one way we can use cross chain um, messaging. Um, but like further than that, there's kind of more applications, which I think are, are more interesting. Um, and especially like Futarchy. Um, so once we prove out Futarchy on Zeitgeist, uh, what we're hoping will happen is that um, other parachains in the Polkadot and Kusama ecosystem will um, also want to opt into Futarchy. So you can think of Zeitgeist as kind of the Futarchy provider uh, for these other parachains. Yeah, no, it makes absolute sense. Um, I want to move on a little bit now um, and I want to talk about the fundraising. So how did that go? And do you have any plans to do a pre-sale, public sale? Um, and what about any listings? Yeah, so it's still, so so we raised our seed round in um, in late March. Yeah. Um, and we raised 1.5 million at that time, um, $1.5 million. And since then, we've we've raised a bit more, but we haven't um, we haven't uh, published how much yet. Um, so that'll be coming soon. Like the exact information about uh, the the full raise. Um, but looking a bit further ahead, we are planning to um, have a public offering. Um, so we would still pretty sparse on the details on what this what this will look like and when it'll be. Um, but I think we've been um, pretty transparent to the community so far um, that we're planning to do um, something like an IDO or an LBP um, that's native to Kusama, which is where we plan to deploy Zeitgeist, um, the Kusama relay chain. Um, so whether this is, um, I mean, the most likely thing is that we'll use one of the already deployed parachains um, as the platform for us to do our public offering um, in a decentralized way. Um, and that's coming fairly soon. Uh, we're planning it to be in the next couple months. Um, it's partly reliant on when uh, the parachains have full functionality that we can actually do that. Um, but we think it's going to be pretty soon. So uh, we'll definitely be keeping people posted about that. Um, and then... And then uh, as far as like listing and stuff, it's it's still kind of too early to talk about uh, listing stuff yet. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, talking about um, the community and being transparent with them because that's always really, really important. So in terms of, um, you know, attracting more users, what are your plans to do that and your plans to expand in that sense? Yeah, so one big thing is like making the application uh, usable, um, which we're focusing a lot on. Um, but we, so we just completed our first marketing campaign on the testnet, um, the Kusama Derby. And uh, I mean, we had a few different goals for this. Like one of the goals was to um, do like a token distribution. We distributed tokens, small amounts of tokens to uh, over 5,000 um, different people. Um, an another one was to do a stress test on the, um, on the test net to make sure we can handle a large load like this. And we could, um, but, but a third one that I'm not sure we, uh, really planned on, but we ended up being something that I think is going to definitely play into our user acquisition strategy going forward is that, uh, we were able to use the, uh, event. Um, so the event was based on the first five or, or the first three actually. Uh, parachain auctions on Kusama. And we were able to use this event and create a specialized um, interface for it. Um, so we created a um, something that looked like a horse race uh, where each of the parachains were uh, a different horse. And then we were able to kind of use this to drive 
um, our marketing effort. And what it, what I think it let, fed, fed back into was that we found that we could um, do this kind of thing, this marketing campaign, um, and it works, works out fairly well for us. So uh, what we're planning to do is hold uh, marketing campaigns like this every, every few months um, on a different uh, theme or a different topic. Um, like the next one could be on politics, for instance, um, or esports or something else. And this way we can kind of stage out um, the different market sectors that we want to go after um, based on uh, what, what theme we do for that campaign for, for those. Let's say like every quarter we do it. So just finally then, I want to know what are the key milestones that um, you're working to in the next six months or even one year from now? Yeah, so in the next six months, so that'll be right around the end of the year. Um, so, by, so, so in the near term, we're super focused on the application. Um, and we'll, we want the, the next milestone is the application launch. Um, after that, we'll do the public sale. And then toward the end of the year, um, we'll, we want to do our full um, parachain lease offering, uh, which is basically obtaining a, a parachain uh, slot on Kusama. Uh, which which would be our mainnet deployment. This, this is when we go live. Uh, so we want to be live by the end of the year. And then going further than that, um, the focus will primarily be on both um, user acquisition as well as um, kind of external prediction markets. So Zeitgeist, um, it's not only a single application, but it's also a platform for other applications. So... After we launch, we're gonna we're gonna focus a lot more on bringing more um, applications into Zeitgeist and having other people build on Zeitgeist as well. Logan, I want to thank you so much. It's been so fascinating having you on the program today and learning more about it. I wish you the best of luck um, with the next coming months. Thank you. Yeah, it's been great. And guys, if you do want to learn more about Zeitgeist, then head to zeitgeist.pm or you can head to Zeitgeist on Twitter.